So recently, there's a new dating show called One We Love that was dropped by my former employers at The Smart Local. And the gist of the show is that they get together some hot, fresh singles that are ready to mingle, pass. And, you know, they'll be living together for one week to try and find love. Basically, Singles Inferno, but Singapore and a much smaller budget. I'm not a particularly big fan of reality dating shows. I find that most of them are pretty trashy. And also, they don't exactly shine the contestants in a good light. Sometimes the contestants are just unpleasant people. But at the same time, they're also at the mercy of the producers and directors and whatever storyline that they want to make. And I think why people love watching them is because you feel like you can let out your most inner, carnal, judgmental self out without fearing the drawbacks of being a shitty person that judges people. It's like the moment people offer themselves to be part of a reality dating show, they're immediately being shoved into this category where it's more okay for them to be judged just because they you know, signed up for it. And the thing is, the scenarios on these shows and the storylines are manipulated to sort of manufacture emotional responses from the audience. And that's why we love watching these trashy shows because it gets us to feel things, empathize with the cast. I was convinced by a friend to go give it a try and I watched it with my homie, Robbie. And I will say that it's not that bad. Like it wasn't overtly cringy or trashy, but I can't say that it's amazingly entertaining as well. It's, it's quite safe. Production wise like really props to the one behind the camera you can really see that it's a high effort and a high budget production even though it's pretty much just being funded by the company itself and for my thoughts on the people on the show i'm just gonna save that for later so i want to preface this by saying that i have actually conversed with some of the guys like one time and you know they seem like decent lads and also tsl they did drop me a dm to interview me potentially be one of the talents of the show but i'm gonna be real i was very into someone else by that point and that's why I was like, it's alright. I I don't have to take part in it. I mean, I'm still single la, so you can see how that turned out. Okay, so the episode starts and they start off with some uh, cast intros. First up, we have Oliver, who's this 22-year-old hunk of a model. You know, men just strolls in, shirt unbuttoned, chesticles just out there for the producers to see. And this is going to be a common theme in the first two episodes where Oliver just gets progressively more and more naked. <laughs> he's a pretty simple guy. He likes playing the guitar and walking out. I wouldn't have been surprised if he's one of those ball is life kind of guys as well. But the kicker is that Oliver is actually a computer science student from NUS. I'm Oliver, I'm 22 this year and I'm a computer science student. And then me and Robbie got riled up. Yo! Yo! Hey! Massive dog! Computer science! Let's go! <laughs> the meta is changing. Yo, this is the average comp science look. One of us! Computer science represent! You know ladies, this is the meta now. We ain't nerds wearing three-quarter Bermudas, checkered shirts, sandals and having straight ass Chinese male hair anymore. Geek? is on fleek now. And this is what the average computer science male looks like now. Totally not capping. And next up we have Brandon who's this 24 year old first year Mac design student who's a self-proclaimed hawker anti-killer because he's just constantly making dad jokes. My name is Brandon, I'm 24 years old and right now I'm a full-time student studying mechanical design. But I think my friends will find me rather annoying because I consistently make dad jokes and most of the time it doesn't hit. And his idea is that he wants to be that joke on the show making dad jokes so that the girls would think of him as a daddy. But at the same time I think in this show to make the girls think me as a daddy, so win-win scenario. Eh? See, the thing is, I'm, I'm, I think I'm rather good with dad pickup lines, so I tend to like practice on like the, the stall workers, you know, go up to the auntie, auntie, you seem like you're whole fun. Not really sure how that correlation came about. I'm just trying to imagine like Brandon getting it on and in the middle, she's like, yes, daddy, tell me a dad joke. And he's just like, oh man, babe, you're whole fun. <laughs> no, I can't. Next person that comes in is the first female. She's named Dania. And from first impressions, she does seem pretty innocent and so tong. Hi, my name is Dania. I'm 20 this year and I'm a student. Definitely sounds young. I want to see in a guy like physical, right? Got two different extremes. She sounds like one of those Singaporeans that uses the word like excessively. You know, like that thing, uh, like, I feel like, uh, like, you know, she likes bad boys with broad shoulders and big arms with tattoos. Those so like bad boy kind, like big size, big shoulders, tattoo everywhere. But also in her words, she also likes the ones. I also like the, like the meaty, meaty, cute, cute kind. Like the, nerd. yeah, okay, uh, that kind. Uh. <laughs> she says that the best physical quality is her buttock. Physical, most attractive quality in my buttock. So apparently not both of them. My intrusive thought went like, so is it the left or the right butt? She says she goes to the beach often, but no guys have really hit on her, Sia. But like, I go to the beach so often, right? I don't think any guy at the beach has like hit on me, Sia. Why, yeah? You know what, Dania? 
you must have been showing the wrong buttock. So next up we have Ross, she's 25, does real estate, wants a kind-hearted and respectful man that's also cute and handsome. She sings, she acts and she hosts. Yeah, that's about it. So next is Sam, he's a musician, 29 years old and he claims to be a goofy guy as well. And right up from the gates, he's just like, I want to open up. So I really want to go in there and just open up, I guess. You know, we stand an emotionally vulnerable man that subscribes to modern masculinity. Good on you, Sam. But then after that, he says this. I don't think girls hit on me very often, but even if they do, I don't think I can tell. Like if they start a conversation with me first, people will tell me that they're hitting on me, but I'll be like, no, they're just being friendly. So I can't tell, so probably not very often. Huh? Hmm. That kind of smells like a man who gets hit on pretty often. I mean, why not? He plays music, he sings, that's a hack in itself already. He's also tall and has tattoos. But then there's something I noticed here, but when Sam does his interviews, it always seems like the producers are holding him hostage. Sam, who gave you the best first impression? Who? The person who gave me the best first impression was Rose. Ross? 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 So Ross immediately takes to Sam because he's extremely tall and she's a little bit short. Being tall for a man is like the equivalent of having nice tatas and a pretty face for a woman. So next up, we are introduced to Casey and she is 25 and she thinks that Singaporean dudes are quite nice. They are like simps. I think Singaporean guys generally are quite nice. They are, they are quite simps. And I'm like, shit, Casey. That's me. Uh, she's a very outdoorsy person. She likes hiking, bouldering, boxing. And of course, we can't forget the modern female fit sport trait of 2022. I like to go for spin class like every other girl. Next up we have Gary and if there's something I'll say about Gary it's like he is the token punching bag for the first few episodes of the show. They were really not holding back on Gary. I just want to say that I'll cry if I to go on a date with Gary. <laughs> 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 right up when he strolls in man is like looking awkward already. You know, he's like focusing on not getting the psychomotor walking mistake that we see in the army. <laughs> He's 27 and throughout all his interviews, it really does seem like he's going for a job interview. Out of the dating show, I really want to find a partner that thinks alike like me. I don't want to force anything that is out of my control. I'm not that kind of guy. Like what Robbie was saying, he's kind of like one of those Skyrim NPCs. You try mercenary work? Hey! Watch! Going on? Need something? Hi adventurer, my name is Gary. I am looking to find someone that thinks alike with me. Are you prepared to find me my partner? Accept quest. He says, I'm a nice guy, but not always nice. I am a nice guy, but I'm not always nice. Uh, it's like trying to say the opposite of, I'm a fuck boy with a heart of gold. But it just came out like, I'm a nice guy, but not always nice. Grr. Puts his mean face on. I'm a nice guy, not always nice. Hmm. It's like a cat there trying to look fierce. So next we have Atika and she's a financial consultant. I'm Atika, I'm 24 this year and I'm a financial consultant. And yeah, um, all viewers of mine will know, I am going to be ripping to this already. Atika is an attractive woman, so she says that guys do hit on her quite often. You know, they'll hit her up. I don't really hit on guys, but um, guys hitting on me, I think it's quite frequent. Be it social media or like face to face, um, guys can just like approach me and say like, you know, I think you're attractive. Can we go out and catch some, you know, coffee or waffle? Atika will be like, yeah, sure. Have you ever thought about investing and taking care of your financial health? <laughs> Pickup lines are an ick to her, so Brandon just like, damn, my auntie killers are not going to work on Atika. For fun. And lastly, we have this pro model, Dion, from Basic Models Management. Uh, she thinks men in uniform are quite hot. The thing about Singaporean guy, if you wear uniform like OCS and Dio, I think it's quite hot. <laughs> well, Dion, don't be surprised when I show up to you with that green army singlet, curved cut, FBT short strip. That's where it's at. When Dion comes in, Oliver immediately just gets off the chair so that he can see Dion a little better. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'll be sprawled here. Yeah. Hi. But more importantly, it's probably to make his like chesticles a little more prominent to Dion, who is kind of like the GR equivalent on One Week Love. So he's just facing her with his legs up like, hey. 
Okay, so the whole cast is here and for some reason, Gary feels that he should introduce the height of the guys to the girls. Oliver was feeling a little bit playful, so he's like, hey, come guess my height. 182. Oh, that's close. Yeah, one I'm 182. One, I'm 181.5. You're 185? I know, I know. Yeah. I know I look short, yeah. I know I look quite short. You know, yeah, Oliver, you're actually damn short, you know, just 11.5 centimeters above the local average. You know, sometimes I myself, I do feel that I'm a little too tall at my humble height of 173 centimeters. You know, yeah la. I know I look quite tall sometimes, lah. You know, <sighs> yeah la. I I I I know I'm quite tall lah. So they are done with the intros and we fetch some initial thoughts from the cast. Gary just so excited to be on this show that you know he was telling the producers that this is more exciting than his birthday. I told uh, the team this is even more exciting than my own birthday. <laughs> and I'm like Gary, Gary's friends, you all need to step out your birthday game. Sam still looks like he's being held hostage. I'm just going to see what is installed. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. The producers are like, Sam, smile. Where's the smile? I don't see a smile, Sam. It's fun. But then we get to Dania, and Dania, man, Dania does not pull her punches. Dania's just like, all these guys are mid. Where's the fifth guy? Talking about the guys, that everyone wants to say that, like, me, right? The more they open their mouth, the lesser we like them. And I'm like, damn, Dania. I could already smell the comments coming from TikTok. Andrew Tate was right. You open your mouth the less we like you also. This is why I'm single. So that sort of wraps up the first episode and we get to the first challenge, which was being held at Wild Wild Wet. Basically, the first one to retrieve five of their floats from the wave pool wins the chance to go on a date tonight. Brandon put on his alpha male big dick energy and he's like, I got this. The thing is, before like, the competition, really, I was okay now. No, I feel you guys. Sorry, lads. This anti killer is going to kill the boys. And don't say he's not a man of his word because Brandon did indeed destroy the competition. Wait, he won it! Yeah, run, 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 run. No, he knows he won it already! You know, the girls were all betting on Oliver because he had the nicest physique, so they thought he was the fittest. Um, he's quite well built, lah. Yeah. All of us, like, actually, secretly, all the girls were betting on Oliver. We were talking about his back. I don't know if you guys are looking at his back, but he has quite a nice back, and we really thought he was, like, built well. He was saying that he had this humongous back. His legs were like wings you see on a bat. If he just did the Mr. Olympia pose, he could, like, probably glide down a tree or something like that. And I'm not too surprised by this because Oliver did indeed look like one of the fitter ones out there. And like what Confucius used to say, the wider your legs, the more bitches you get. Okay, but if there's one thing I've noticed here, it was that Gary had this strategy of carrying as many floats as possible on the first run. And he reminds me of me and those kids back in church when we were young. You know, keeping like chairs after fellowship and we just hold as many chairs as possible because we think that will impress the girls. And I still wonder why I'm single. And Oliver ends up being the last. So next up is the girls and it wasn't even that much of a competition. You know, Atika just channeled the spirit of ikigai, meditation, entrepreneurship and waking up at 5am and just smashed the competition. Competition. Dania was totally lost during the challenge. Dania is lost. It's okay, Dania. <laughs> embarrassing, right? And Brandon said this roast pun hybrid thing. <laughs> Dania, you're done, yeah? Oh, oh Brandon, you damn lame, man. Eh? Yeah, Brandon. The anti killers were not working that day. Dion just sort of gave up in the middle of the challenge. I just got swept back to yeah. four. Dion has given up. Yeah, I was a bit competitive at the start, but my body just. No. But Oliver, seeing through those rose-tinted chesticles of his, he was like, damn, she is a heart of a warrior. So I think she definitely has like the heart of a warrior. I would love to definitely get to know her better and like spend more time with her. So I don't know what a warrior means to Oliver subjectively, but you know, when I think of warrior, I think of 300. This is Sparta. The heroes gearing up against Thanos in Endgame. But in this case, I, I would like you to imagine that scene in 1917. The soldiers are charging in front and Dion is one of those soldiers. She runs halfway and she just flops to the floor and gives up. And Oliver's just in the back line going like, damn, what a fucking warrior. So after winning the challenge, Brandon and Artika get to go out on a date with one another. They get back to their accommodation and the other girls are just simping for Oliver. Hi ladies, Oliver's not going on a date today. It definitely must be because he's from computer science. You know, the boys are in their own room and just having this professional conversation. Like those buff guys on computers meme. Afterwards, Oliver goes straight to Dion and asks to talk to her. It's quite obvious that they were into each other from the very beginning. Almost like 
it was planned. It felt like they knew each other before they came onto the show. The moment she came in, he took action. He went to shift his position. He was constantly looking at her and winking at her this whole time. And now they constantly talk and praise one another. They were really horny for one another. Brendan gears up for his date with Atika and during the interview, he's quite chill and really hits home at the true moral of the story of One Week Love. I mean, ultimately, even if you don't fall in love or anything, we still will end up being friends and it looks like no matter what, there's no downside for it. Turns out the true one week love are the friends we made along the way. Atika is looking forward to digging deep into the recesses of Brandon's mind. You know, she thinks a lot of the guys keep it to the surface and don't like revealing the inner parts of themselves because, you know, they don't want to be vulnerable. And, you know, this sounds kind of familiar. I feel like I've talked about this before. For some reason, Brandon greets her with Hola, senor. Hola, senor. Hola. Bit odd. And they have some oddly specific shots afterwards showing Brandon and Atika getting to their date location. I really wonder who is helping to fund this show. Hmm. So they go on their date and initially their date was going pretty badly. Absolutely zero chemistry. Now Atika wants to dive into the inner machinations of Brandon's mind. But he gets uncomfortable when things get too silent and people are not laughing at his auntie killer. So often from my past relationships, the worst thing about me is that I'm always joking. Always joking? Yeah, I, I've struggled to find oh. the line when I should stop. I understand. So I consistently try to break these kind of things. Uh -oh. When people don't laugh if you're uncomfortable. And it just devolves into this very yes no type conversation. Atika gives me strong independent woman vibes. But turns out she's also quite introverted. And she tells Brandon about how she likes having space from people to, you know, be alone at times. Pretty normal stuff. And Brandon's like, oh, so do you want to get me out of 10 right now? <laughs> if I'm overwhelmed, mm -hmm. like I just shut myself up. I don't really like to talk. Like people need to give me space. You need space now. <laughs> Okay, it's really overwhelming for me. I just need space, right? So at that point of time, I just wanted to be away from everyone. So at that, that moment itself, I just booked a flight ticket to Paris. Like, alone. I think I like to do things alone. I feel like I really can... So do you want me to go outside? <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Brandon time and place. On the first watch, I can definitely see how Brandon is trying to sort of lighten the mood. But on the second viewing, I can kind of understand what Artika is trying to do in that she's trying to tell more about herself on a deeper level. You know, rather than just opening pleasantries and asking things like, oh, what do you study? And But I think after the exchange, Brandon really just turned her off. Uh, you know, men had to bring out the emergency questions like, do you like pineapple on pizza? And how that's a red flag. Pineapple, no pineapple. Pineapple is fine. How are you? Pineapple is like real fruit. But it doesn't belong on pizza. I think it's okay. No, 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 no. That's a deal breaker for me. Really? Big red flag. And you can really see in the body language how the mood really changed. The change in eye contact and shifting where she's facing away from him. Atika likes reading books, probably books like Atomic Habits, How to Win Friends and Influence Others, Ikigai, The 5am Club. It cuts back to Oliver and Dion and they talk about what happened in the challenge. Oliver is direct, confident, cocks out, but also with the blenders conversation ever. Competition. Then. Okay, okay. And then are you, are you gonna win also? Yeah. Oh, have you seen me today? How you want you me are, to no, win? Honestly, you're really good though. Like. And Fauzi, one of the panelists, just straight up calls him out on that. But I am not impressed with Oliver because he was the one who asked her out. But beyond that, the conversation kind of just was like... Uh, so why are you talking Yeah, it's like, make a move, man. Start the conversation with like, you know, something talk more concrete. Her. Have talk some game la. Yeah, correct. Talk, give a con... You know, he's already planning with Dion on what a perfect date would be like. He asked her where she would want to go for a perfect date. And just like how I would reply when I got nothing in mind. How much chill? Like a bar? Like, like a... can be a bar or a restaurant. It's not got vibes, can really. And then he hits up with a promise, proclaiming that they'll both win the challenge tomorrow with the power of trust. Yeah. Of course you, you're gonna win. How? I don't even know what we're gonna do. You just gotta trust. Huh. Pretty sure you can. Yeah. Evans announced. Mark our words. It really gives me that trust bro type energy. Eh, bro. Sumpa, trust, this one can one. So it cuts back to the people at the accommodation and they play this game called We're Not Really Strangers. And this game is meant to get people to sort of open up to one another. Oliver's V-neck collar shirt is just getting deeper and deeper. They do have a pretty lovely session where they tell a bit more about themselves. And one thing Gary wants to take away from his parents is their unconditional love for him. But no matter what, they still showed me unconditional love. And that's I think something that I will want to show for my future partner and also my child 
in the future. Yeah. Which is like, mm, Gary. Gary sort of gives me that GCP energy. Nice guy, but not always nice. Hmm. You know, that man that will provide you that stable, comfortable family and house. Sam talks about sometimes not being able to stay in the present moment because he has ADHD. Sometimes I struggle to stay present in situations. I was diagnosed with ADHD a few years ago. Yeah, so sometimes it's, if you guys see me like looking around or not having my attention on you, it's, it's not you, it's me. And they sort of say that, hey, Sam, you're Gucci. You have been present this whole time. And they're like, oh, this wholesome moment. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. But I think so far you've been very present. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And then we cut back to the train wreck that is Brandon and Atika's date. And the panel just calls it out. There's a wall. wall. Yeah. yeah. She's, she, every time he wants to approach her, right? Mm. She's like, nah, I don't really like, I'm not no, really I like that. Talk. I don't know if I would call her empathetic. <laughs> yeah. Same. Without the EM. <laughs> <laughs> Atika is not throwing the auntie killer a bone at all. We also learned that Atika doesn't really date younger boys. But the only guy younger is Oliver, so I don't really think that matters. You know, he only has eyes for the warrior in his heart. Mm. I will also say that I don't think age is the best indicator of one's maturity. At least that's what I hear from others as well. At the end of episode 2, they do some wrap-ups. And the conclusion is that Daniel still thinks these guys are mid. Got fifth guy, is it? I hope so. <laughs> And Ross concludes with the moral of the story. Even if it's a one-week love, I think it's going to be a one-week love and also friendship. True one-week love are the friends we made along the way. On episode 3, we start out with Atika's and Brandon's date. So Atika and Brandon had actually a better conversation afterwards. And they get back to their accommodation. The girls are squealing, asking Atika how the date was. <laughs> Brandon comes back to the boys and he also talks to them about it. Oliver gets closer to being naked. I just see Oliver's cleavage at this point. Gary wants to talk but gets shut down once again because they had to go somewhere else. I don't know, the, the vibe I'm getting is that she's quite, quite a real person. She's very, very Gen Z. Come in! Oh. Hi! 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 Poor Gary, every time you try to talk, someone yeah, is disrupting dis him. <laughs> they head over to the girl side and Sam just busts out another kryptonite of the female population and starts playing his guitar and singing. You know, this man has an entire arsenal in wooing women. He's emotionally vulnerable, he's tall, he has nice tattoos, he plays music, and Ross starts getting into that. I was just and then they go to bed and me and Robbie are wondering what it was like on the boys end. But they never show the boys room. I can, I can only imagine what it's actually like. <laughs> <laughs> Both dudes in the single bed together. <laughs> yeah. Hey yo, 2022 man. It's just how it be. It's, it's just how, if you're not wishing your homies good night at night, are you really homies? Exactly. You're not tucking your homies in, kissing <laughs> yeah. good night. Are you really homies there? Yeah man, are you not making out with your boys before yeah. you go to sleep? <laughs> If you want, are you really homies? You know, exactly. you need to question yourself. Are you even friends at that point? Asking the real questions, yeah. man. Test your friendship. Try it out now. Yeah, make it out with, make out with the homies. Yeah, go kiss your homies right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's a new day and we start off with Dania ripping into Gary again. So Gary creates this beautiful spectacle of sandwich with that perfect 50-50 ratio of Nutella and peanut butter. But he apparently made an almighty sin of double dipping and Dania was not having any of that. Gary's a yeah, half right? He didn't, he didn't do he didn't that. Eat it's not that la. Just like not that, that la. They're tasked to cook some nasi lemak for lunch together and I will say that it did lead to some funny interactions. Atika, strong independent financial advisor, decided to take the lead and basically be the leader of this entire operation. Probably learned well from all the leadership courses she attended while becoming a financial advisor. They paired some people together for different stations. Dania with Brandon, Leon and Oliver. And obviously they couldn't get into a new segment before ripping a new hole into Gary's ass once again. Who else is being left out? Gary! <laughs> Gary's gonna be a very big lamppost. Yo, yeah, I'm so or sorry there, like, Gary. Gary, come on. You know, they started cooking the nasi lemak. Daniel freaks out at the water boiling. Hey, hey, I love hey, hey, hey. this. Hey, hey, hey. hey, just for high. <laughs> Uh, and when it's time to put in the rice, she gets absolutely terrified and uses the cover to shield herself from boiling water. You know, Oliver chops some chilies with Dion and a brilliant idea hatches into that masculine, gesticular mind of his. Can you eat spicy? 
not that spicy. It's kind of weird though, because it's so spicy. <laughs> I can imagine that Oliver was just sniffing at Dion, you know, smelling her pheromones, and his nose started clogging up like he was eating wasabi. Like, <sighs> Milk was dripping on, he's like, damn, she's spicy. The panel just laps it up. <laughs> I, I knew it was coming. Oliver is so oily. <laughs> They find it within themselves to rag on Gary once more. Gary's taking this very seriously. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that yet, it's not yet. Gary, you're on one with love, not Master Chef. <laughs> Fauzi gets personally offended during this segment. Hey, whatever oh. you all do, the sambal, I'm okay. Ah, Sipa, you don't eat sambal? <laughs> <laughs> They have lunch and afterwards it's time for the next challenge. And it was as if a wishing star was going across Singapore as Danya was roasting the shit out of the guys because a new man was introduced and very much like what Danya likes. He looked like a bad boy with broad shoulders, giant arms and tattoos. You know, pretty much everything that Danya wants. So this new guy is named Don. And Don is the token personal trainer of the group in reality dating shows. And it's pretty obvious that Oliver's chesticles and lats would not be able to match up to this man. He was a little afraid of Don stealing Dion's warrior heart. But it didn't really seem like he minded though. Then he excited. I was also a bit like, oh, what, what can I expect? He's gonna steal all the chicks. Donovan just strolled in with like his massive biceps. Like, yeah, his hunky body. I was like, damn, maybe it's a bit hard. I get jealous. But Bro, Oliver oh, kind of sass. Oliver kind of sass. Oliver was also a bit happy that Don is here. <laughs> Casey actually seemed interested for the first time in these three episodes. Personality first, right? But I actually forgot to add, I actually am very attracted. <laughs> Atika wasn't too impressed by Don and she subscribes to playing hard to get. But I don't want to get to know him yet. If you like a guy, just don't show. Because guys get very people show interest, vice versa. So honestly, just don't show interest. Play hard to get. And you just know that the TikTok incels are going to go ham on this. You know, ever the punching bag, the panel compares Dawn to Gary and says that Dawn seems mature like Gary, but not in the same way because Dawn is not as serious. They get to the next challenge and it's a fitness based challenge, so totally up Donovan's alley. You know, Oliver starts to doubt the power of trust and loses confidence in keeping his promise with Dion. Definitely, I was like very determined to win the challenge based on the pack that me and Dion made. But then, well, when I saw Donovan just stroll in with like his massive biceps, like, yeah, you know, Hunky body, I was like, damn, he is a bit hard. A uh, long story short, Oliver's team did not win the challenge, but it's okay because I think he managed to secure some massive dubs during this segment. Firstly, he really got to see Dion channel her warrior heart. Must have really made him cream his pants. And afterwards, he got to see Dawn in action as well. And Dawn really just channeled in the Ooga Booga silverback gorilla energy and power. Man was creating ripples not just in the ropes, but apparently people's pants as well. And not just Oliver, Atika as well. Dawn looked great because also like he was wearing sleeveless and then like he has big arms and tattooed big arms. When he did the, the whole entire thing, that's all I can say. And the panel really caught her out on that. Wait a minute, Miss Atika. I thought you said I don't like guys who are stuck. Ah, Atika, Atika, Atika. You changed your mind like a girl yeah. changes clothes. No. But she was impressed by his oh, wow. <laughs> Donovan's team advances and goes on to the next challenge. And Sam just pulls out this giga chat move of helping out the other female contestants, collects some of the missing puzzle pieces, uh, helping out Dion because, you know, Dion can't really swim. And eventually, Ross wins the challenge and earns a date. And the episode ends on her choosing who she wants to go on a date next, which is deep out. So, yeah, that's it for the three episodes I've watched so far. I went in without much expectation and now after three episodes in, I'm still like eh. But there's one thing I'll say though is that if TikTok saw Dania, this is what I'll have to say to her. Dania, you're done ya. Dania, you're done ya. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you want me to cover the other episodes.